Let's have a look at the association between marginal rate of substitution and marginal rate of transformation in this video. Recall from the beginning of this series that we saw that in equilibrium, consumers are going to trade food and clothing until their willingness to exchange is the same. At that point, they exhaust all the possibilities of trading and that's what we're looking for. So in other words, the marginal rate of substitution of N should equal to the marginal rate of substitution of bill at that specific point. But let's see how this relates to the marginal rate of transformation. Why do we even care about that? First of all, we have to understand that the margins have to deal have to deal with some derivatives. So the marginal rate of substitution of an individual, of a consumer, shows how much food, for instance N, is willing to trade for one more unit of clothing. Whereas the marginal rate of transformation, the slope of the marginal rate of transformation over here, is showing us, I'm sorry, the slope of the PPF, which is the MRT, the MRT is also showing us in terms of production, how much, how much food we must give up to produce one more unit of clothing. So in other words, think of it as the supply and demand side of the economy. The producers are the suppliers, how much they have to adjust their production to satisfy the demand, the willingness to exchange those goods between the consumers themselves. Hope this analogy makes sense. So the MRT also has to deal with the change in the quantity of food, change in the quantity of food relative to the change in the quantity of clothing. So one more unit of clothing, how much food do we have to give up? Hope this makes sense. And now let's give an example to understand where we're going with this. What do we want in equilibrium? So suppose the MRS, suppose, let's say the MRS of N, let's work with one individual. The MRS of N is equal to four. In other words, N is willing to change four units of food for one more unit of clothing. She is, for her, this is equivalent. She is willing to, she is willing to trade this. So four units of food, let me write it here below. Four units of food four units of food would be equivalent to one more unit of clothing. That's what this slope over here would show us. And let's suppose that the marginal rate of transformation at that specific point from the production side, that's equal to two. In other words, we must produce two units less of food in order to get one more unit of clothing. So two units of food is worth one unit of clothing for the production side. Now to, to give, to give one more unit of clothing to N. What do we need to do? Well, let's have a look. For that, we need to not produce four units of food, right? Because N is willing to exchange four units of food. In other words, from the production side, four units of food that N is willing to exchange would be worth two units of clothing. Hope you see the, hope you see the logic. It's just, it's just a double. The, the proportion is double. If one unit of clothing is worth two units of food, two units of clothing is worth four units of food. Hope this makes sense. Now, these are the four units of food that N is willing to give up. She, she's, she's willing to trade it for one more unit of clothing. So she would like the company of clothing to give her that one more unit, to supply that one more unit, that she can buy it. But instead, she's willing to not have on the market the four units of food because she does not want it. Now, how does that work out? Well, if the production side, if the companies does not produce the four units of food, the production company is going to produce two units of clothing instead. So the clothing company is going to deliver two units of clothing on the market and is going to is going to put it on the market for sale to N. So this is a this is a closed economy like, you know, they, they know what's happening there. They they talk to each other. This is a very simple case. Hope this makes sense. So there's two units of clothing there in exchange for these four units of food. But N only required one unit of clothing. N required one unit of clothing. See what happens. N is actually getting one extra unit of clothing. One extra unit of clothing. And this extra unit of clothing can even be distributed between N and Bill. It could give half unit to N, half unit to Bill, so that they both get more clothing. Or even just N can take all of it. But at the end of the day, at least one consumer benefits from it. Why? Because in terms of production, it wasn't that expensive to produce that unit of clothing. Hope you see the intuition. That unit of clothing in terms of production costs resources from two units of food only. So to produce or to give up the four units of food that N is willing to exchange, the production company can produce twice as much as she is requiring, twice as much as she needs 
in return for those four units of food. And in that case, of course, we can see that she is benefiting. She is getting extra clothing. Now, same logic as before, because it's a market, it's a free market, they are going to adjust their demand in such a way, because recall, the marginal rate of substitution in equilibrium is equal to the price ratios, right? Is equal to the price ratios. So the price of clothing relative to the price of food. That's happening in equilibrium. In equilibrium, we also know that the marginal rate of transformation is equal to the ratio of marginal costs of clothing relative to the marginal cost of food. Now we'll see one more, one more association between these two topics. Recall, in a perfect market, in a perfect market with information and when everything goes smooth, we know that companies produce until the last unit of production is covered by the price. In other words, it produces until the prices is equal to the marginal costs, meaning that the ratio of the prices is going to equal to the ratio of the marginal costs. In other words, companies are going to produce until we get to the point of equation between marginal rate of substitution and marginal rate of transformation. So first, first side of the of the story is that we, w we must understand this relative demand and supply. So how much consumers are willing to trade versus how much companies are willing to produce or how much not are willing to produce, but how much they're ca capable, the capacity to produce one good in terms of the other. And on the other hand, we also must see in the case of the market mechanism that the, the producers themselves are going to produce until the point where this is equal to the ratio of the prices. And we also know that that ratio of the prices is going to be the equilibrium point for the consumer. So by definition, this is going to happen when MRS for each consumer equals to MRT. So this is our general equilibrium that we were working on. This is why we made all this series to get to this general equilibrium concept, general equilibrium. Marginal rate of substitution for N equals to marginal rate of substitution for Bill equals to the marginal rate of transformation. And if we give it in simple words, a sentence, two sentences for this, what does it mean? It means that at this equilibrium point, at the point where the companies use the resources as well as possible and consumers trade as well as possible, as good as possible, the willingness to exchange goods. So I'll, I'll write this I'll write it here. The willingness to exchange goods willingness to exchange goods to exchange goods is equal to the capacity to produce them capacity to produce them hope this makes sense again we're speaking about the demand side of the market consumer side of the demand of the market and supply side of the market the producer side of the market so if the consumers are willing to exchange in a ratio of two to one the production companies should also be able to produce at the ratio of two to one. They should be able to free resources from two units of food to produce that extra unit of clothing. In that sense, in that sense, there's no more way, there's no better way to improve the economy like we did here. There's no way that we will be able to give to the consumer extra clothing because the proportion in which they are willing to exchange it and the proportion in which the companies are willing to produce them they are the same by definition this means that the possibility for improvement is exhausted that is that that is as efficient as equilibrium it can be hope this makes sense and we are done